and we're live what's going on everybody uh it's gonna be an interesting one this is gonna be fun uh let's talk about some guitar stuff and uh and and just i don't know see how this goes say blah 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 okay so it's going to be an interesting time how are you all this evening we are in a new place somewhere outside of chattanooga tennessee so i don't know how cell phone we're we're working on cell reception tonight so if it starts to buffer or starts to do whatever just hang in there it'll probably come back we got some we got some decent speed, so I think we'll be okay. Um, we are also very tired, and we have just now finally cracked open our first cocktails for the Thursday Night Live. We're ready now. So it could get punchy around here today, because we are uh, we moved today from Augusta, Georgia, to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and. Um, Moving days are always a little... Yeah, and that's... It doesn't sound very far, but... No. But when you move your house... It was a long day. Yeah. And there was a lot of traffic. There was a lot of traffic. And driving this big thing through Atlanta, you know, it can take its toll. So, for those of you that are not familiar with what we do here on Thursdays, this is Dylan Talks Tone Live Q&A. So... This means that you're going to get in the comments and uh, ask any questions you want. And I should, well, here, and also, um, as re and, uh, in addition to that, those of you that are YouTube members, click the little join button down below and you, you joined. And also, everybody over on Patreon can ask questions. I put a post up every week just for YouTube members and Patreon members. And we make sure that they get featured. This question, and I want everybody to know this, does not have to do with any particular subject. Many times I will put up the thumbnail for what the video is going to be, like what this week is going to be about. But I think a lot of people are like, well, I don't have any questions about that particular subject, so I'm not going to ask a question. No, you can ask whatever you want. Like, why is the sky blue? Like, I might not even know the answer to the question that you ask, but I would still like you to ask it and be a part of the conversation. So, just FYI, that's the deal. Plus, super chats, plus, etc. You You all know how YouTube works. So, um, and then what we do is we feature those questions that came in over Patreon, and we also try to go back, and Leslie looks for some questions to for us to answer as well as the main topic for this evening, which is... Dun, 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 dun. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> Since we can't do sound effects, maybe you should just do sound effects. Like when somebody like... I venture to think that it will always not be the right sound effect. <laughs> That's okay. Like when somebody does a super chat, like you have to come up with a sound, that will be your new job. When somebody comes up with a sound, when somebody super chats in, then you have to make a noise with it. Since we can't make noises with our new software, that's the one thing we can't do. So that would be kind of funny. No comment. We'll see what happens. <laughs> anyway, um, Sergey says he has a stupid question. There really aren't any kind of stupid questions. Like, I think. This is pretty open and pretty chill, as you'll see. Uh, the main question tonight ha is having to do with guitar shapes again, because there has been so many questions that came out of that really cool video that we did with Ron Beanstalk. And, um, of course, there was a lot of discussion in the chat, in the comments of that video, 
of people who think he was wrong or people who didn't like it or whatever. And so one of the things is, why don't we have more guitar shapes than what we have? So we're going to talk about that here in just a little bit. And you might not like the answer, but I want to talk about it because you know me. Uh, if you follow this channel at all, you know that I'm going to push the edges a little bit and make everybody kind of like think outside the box and kind of, you know, just push it a little bit. And also in some house cleaning, keeping, housekeeping uh, for the week, people keep asking me to start a podcast. There Why is don't you start a podcast. Great idea. You can go over to iTunes or Apple or whatever they call it, uh, Dylan Talks Tone, search Dylan Talks Tone, and it's there. This show right here is a podcast. We take the audio from it and we turn it into a podcast every week. And Spotify and Google and all the other major podcasts, blah, 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 blah. You can go check it out. Please do it and subscribe to them wherever you listen to your podcast and hit the little five star thing only five stars are allowed because it's awesome and you know it so just do that and um do a little review and be like it's a humongous waste of time but i still do it anyway and it's really awesome you know what i mean like whatever so that would be killer um let's go ahead and uh sergey i see you threw a comment a question in there we will get to it in just a few minutes what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to our youtube members who have um, hit the join button and the Patreon folks and handle their questions first and then we'll get into the chat. Brett says, is there any noticeable difference in a covered versus uncovered tele neck pickup? If not, why are we still putting covers on them? That is a great question. Um, Who's we? Just kidding. Well, you know, he's right. Because there's a lot of argument about this question. But putting a cover on a humbucker or a tele pickup, it can and does make a difference in the sound of the pickup. Do, is it bad? It depends what you consider bad. Does it change a little? Yeah, it changes a little. That's okay. Um, it Now, when we make pickups... I want the cover to be on there because I want it to look right, and we're going to get to that in a minute. Um, but it takes away a little bit of highs sometimes, but you can work around that. You can still design the pickup around that, which is no big deal. Um, yeah, no, it works. It works awesome. So I would say, yes, it makes a difference, but why... Do we keep putting them on there? That is going... Let's address the why are we, do we keep putting pickup covers on stuff. We're going to address that when we talk about why there are not very many shapes. And I bet that gives you a clue as to why and my whole theory on this whole thing. But we will not spoil it for you. Also, I've been putting timestamps on these. Uh, videos so you can go through afterwards if you're watching it or listening to it in replay I even put the timestamps in the podcast Ooh. yeah so people can fast forward to questions that they want to see or hear Ian says hello hello Ian what happens to guitar shapes when a company goes defunct does the shape still belong to whoever that'd be whomever just in case you want to know that owned the brand last that's an awesome question. Um, he also had a footnote on his question referring to Parker, for example, because Parker is technically out of business. So um, I'm just going to go based on what I've been told by Ron. Um, and it's probably a case-by-case -case situation. However, the gist of it is this. In order to maintain a trademark, the trademark needs to be used in the marketplace and then it needs to be defended when someone uh, tries to copy it. So 
if nobody is doing that for a particular period of time, and I don't know what that time is, and that would probably be a license, or that would probably be a, a lawyer issue. Like, let's say... Dun, 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 dun. Oh, sweet! We have a super chat. We have a super chat. Jeff Childs, I just wanted to say hello. I'm at work, and I can't hear what's <laughs> being said over all the machinery here. I will catch the rerun later. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate you at least popping in and saying hello. That is awesome. Jeff's cool, man. Oh, um, gosh. What? I have to do it again. Do it again. Um, oh, awesome. That's Thanks. a good one. Michael Resendiz didn't even have a question. He just wanted me to... That's incredible. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank what you, are we, Mike. What are we supposed to do with that? I need yeah. a wah pedal. Ooh. So maybe for our a video series that nobody even knows about yet, except for everybody now. on. Well, people on Patreon know about it because I put part one now on there. Everybody knows. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. What is that sound you did from? I don't know. That's know. like it's something one of those. You listen to though. I hear it all the time. Uh, it's on I a. I have a visual. It's okay. on a particular radio show that I used to listen to that I don't listen to anymore. That is now a podcast. Oh, and I've been listening to it, so maybe I've been hearing. And it, it is also um, Matt from Matt's RV Reviews says it does it a lot too. Does he use a real sound or he does it with his? He mouth? does it <laughs> like that. He does it with his voice. <laughs> Anyway, <clears throat> did we say we were tired? Yeah. So, so the deal is with this whole uh, trademark thing is, for example, Parker um, is a. It's still their their products are still in the marketplace. Um, however, I do so I don't know one hundred percent what happened here, but I do know that those things need to be true for a trademark to be. Um, defended okay and to be still in use what i do know though is i know that parker is one of ron's clients and i do know that he very recently did handle a case with it so i do know that they are actively still defending that trademark even though it's not in production even though it's not presently in production um because somebody still can own the brand mm -hmm. i'll give you an example i and i don't know um uh, as far as guitar stuff i'm not 100 percent familiar with how a, a lot of examples but there's a few examples that i am familiar with moda Bacon, for example is a french bicycle manufacturer from the 60s and 70s and someone bought the trademark the logo the brand and then now they put it on these bikes that are made in Taiwan. Hmm. So it's not what it used to be. Um, they do it with cars too. Alpine, for example. So Alpine, it's spelled Alpine, but Alpine is a French company who is kind of like the BMW M or the AMG of the Renault company. They used to be a standalone company by themselves and Renault bought the brand and they are making cool cars and they are also actually the brand of the Formula One team now. Mm -hmm. So somebody bought that brand and are, is using it. So those things can happen. I do, I do know that they can happen. I'm sure that it is a case that needs to be looked at. I'm positive that it has to be looked at. Every, everyone has to be looked at differently. That's a really good question though. Uh, let's see, Jason. I think, oh, Jason just said, this is a great question. I can't wait to, for the video. <laughs> I've often was... wondered about it. I actually prefer non-traditional shaped guitars. I thought he was prefacing his question with, this is a great question. Yes. But he did. Well, some, like, Sergey said he had a dumb question. He prefaced it with, I have a dumb question, even though it's not. No dumb question. No. So Jeff said, this is a great question. Jason. Even Jason said, this is a great question, even though it, it wasn't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> even though it wasn't even a question. Yeah, even though it wasn't even a question. Okay, uh, Jeff, this is a long one. I've noticed that all of my humbucker equipped guitars with two volume controls, except one of them, when the 
selector switch is in the middle position and you roll all the way off either pickup individually you have no sound at all only my wolf wlp seems to be wired so that both pickups are one in the middle position uh, meaning if you roll the neck volume all the way down you still have the bridge okay so this is really long and it's in two pieces so we'll take the confusion out of it what he's asking is why do some Les Paul style guitars or SGs or 335s uh, kill the, you put the pickup selector in the middle. So you have your neck and your bridge pickup on and then you roll in the middle position and you roll one of the volume knobs down and it kills the volume from both pickups. That is called 50s wiring. And modern, so 50s wiring, um, I should have made a diagram for this. Um, but basically, 50s wiring causes this to happen. One of the advantages to 50s wiring, which is not an advantage in my opinion, but it just is, is that it maintains a lot of the highs of the pickup as the volume comes down, but as a result of the way it's wired, it does that. Modern wiring, fender style wiring, other people like to call it, um, is different and it doesn't do that. And that's the way I wire all of my guitars. Um, because I don't like 50s wiring or volume mods or any of that kind of stuff. So, no, it's a great question, actually. Great question. Uh, let's see. You ready to take questions? I am ready to take questions. We can come, go I back and find some. them if you want. No, I already grabbed them. Oh, you did? Mm hmm. Let me just. Get... Are you just going to pop them in there and then I'm going to stick them up? No. Oh, okay. Go ahead. So Sergei's question was, yes. what would be a good starter combo of pickups for rock that gives a lot of variety on a less Paul shape? So two humbuckers, a lot of variety. Uh, our center punch humbucker would be killer because you could coil split it and make it single coil sounding. You could do out of phase stuff. You could play almost metal with it. You could play jazz with it you could play acdc with it it's pretty good it's very very uh maybe that's a very subsequent well done. to the to what we just talked about um if i go for the neck with a seymour duncan sh11 and a tb11 bridge those are going to be hotter for sure uh so they're going to be more, um, they're going to be hotter. They're not going to be as versatile. So thanks, Richard. I appreciate uh, your comment there a lot. Um, do we have some more? Yep. All right, let's hit a couple more, and then we're going to talk about this whole thing. David Carter wants to know, are Strat size P90s inherently muddier than a true P90? That has been my experience so far. Because you haven't tried mine. Um, it depends on the magnet and it depends on the wire. So a lot of people use 43 gauge wire with those to try to pack as much wire on the bobbin as possible. And the, depending on the magnet that they use, that happens. Um, we don't do that. I use a 42 gauge wire. Um, we don't go for tons of wine count. Um, we don't make them overly hot because I don't like that. That's a pet. I agree with you. And that is a pet peeve of mine. So I don't do it that way. Um, much more clarity. Um, there might be a few folks in there that actually um, have tried these. If you have tried one of our pickups, comment and have a conversation amongst yourselves about it because it, it is awesome looks like we you need to make another noise um i don't know quack 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 <laughs> super chat thanks mike i don't know since why we didn't my, get your message since my message on my super chat didn't go through where is my guitar ha ha uh that sounds really passive aggressive he's probably more i'm just kidding <laughs> um Mike Resendis wants to know where his clear strat is. I know where it's at. It's in the bed right now. Oh, is it? It is, yeah. I wrapped it up in a blanket so it wouldn't get scratched while we were moving today. 
So here's the story on the on that. The only the pickups are made, the wiring is ready, the neck is ready, the tuners are installed, everything is ready for that guitar except the pickguard. The pickguard factory that I use to make custom stuff because that one had to be a complete. We had to trace it and make it from scratch because it's a weird. It looks like a strat, but it's not actually a strat. So we had to actually trace a piece of paper and send it off to have it cut because I don't have the equipment to do that stuff anymore. Turns out that they're remodeling and everything is on like a two month wait. So that was a month ago. And so as what I know from a heated conversation, yes, very spirited conversation <laughs> the other day with this company because nobody told me that when I placed the order um we have like three weeks left to wait oh really yeah for the pickup pick guard for that guitar I didn't know that yeah Once. it really did not um sit well with me and I was not very happy but um that is the story but that guitar is so close like once the pick guard comes it's amazing yeah, once the pit guard comes, that guitar will be done in an afternoon. It's, it is... I'm excited for you, Mike. Yeah, it's awesome. And jealous that it won't be here. It makes a really good nightlight. Yeah. It actually... So, the guitar's all disassembled, and the, um... But the battery is still in it. And the switch is still in it. So, we could, like, go, go get the body and just, like, turn the lights on. It could be, on. like, art on the wall, like... Yeah, it's really cool. I don't know. It's amazing. So that is the problem. So I'm sorry for the, uh, well, the video is going to go. Yeah, the video is going to be awesome, dude. For, for sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll tell you what. Uh, let's take a couple more questions and then we'll get into this. Um, okay. And then we'll get into the main subject for the evening. All right. PJ says, ever use ribbon, ribbon of wire? What is that? Ribbon of wire instead of regular wire for pickup? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that is. All right. PJ, can you clarify your question? Yeah. I don't know if I'm reading it wrong. Sergey wants to know, where can I order your pickups? Well, that's a great question. I will just punch that right in right oh, here. Oh, he said he's currently living and working in China. I don't know if that prohibits your internet access or it not? does i mean you're on youtube so maybe you're okay dylantalkstone.com that's where you can find what is the story behind this evening's t-shirt so <clears throat> she wants to dance with somebody duh oh i don't know what is the I, theme of that one it I doesn't have a theme it's no just it doesn't have a theme okay What's i am um, whitney houston song you think of um, Obviously, I just said mine. Yeah, that one probably. That oh. record. I think of that record cover. Okay. Because she's on the record cover. It's orange on the top and the bottom. That's the era where I start to come into Whitney Houston. Like, just after... I really started really taking note of pop music. Mm -hmm. uh, Madonna Like a Virgin. Okay. So that whole, which is 1982... Or three ish, I think. So that that's where I really start to sound old. <laughs> yeah, oh. I guess. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But so the story with the t-shirts is that I um, <laughs> I enjoy beep beep super chat. Uh, I I I enjoy really enjoy throwing people for a loop. Because in my business and with this YouTube channel, everybody expects me to be like, you must love Led Zeppelin and the Allman Brothers and like all of the guitar heroes. And I do, but I also really, really, really love lots of different stuff. And so I pretty much wear these shirts to piss off the internet. But it's in a fun sort of, I don't mean piss off the internet. I mean like in a fun, I have fun with it because it's a fun sort of way to 
I express myself. I really, really want a Katy Perry t-shirt and I can't find one. I've been looking for a Katy Perry t-shirt for a while. They had one at Hot Topic. Um, but but when's it, the last time you've been to Hot Topic? But it didn't fit. It was too small. Oh. And I had a guy last week. Uh, well, here, I'm going to tell you this story after we get to the super chat. Um, Jeff Childs, I can't hear, but I, de I certainly hope Dylan gave the guy who paid $105 for a $5 question a suitable answer. <laughs> I don't know, Mike, was that a suitable answer? Oh, Only you can it was probably that. the wrong answer for that. Yeah, it probably wasn't the answer he wanted. You're amazing, Jeff. But. This is fun. This is super fun. Um, okay, so what was I saying? Oh, so the Shirts. other. Let me tell you what happened the other day. Because I have a Britney Spears t-shirt right now, too. Mm -hmm. And it, I had to delete some comments. I no, hardly ever delete. about your shirt? Because they were accusing me of being like a child molester because I had a Britney Spears. Like, that's not appropriate. You're too old to be wearing that shirt. Blah, 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 blah. Old and then, like, she's older not a than kid. me, I think. I don't know that she's older than you. All right. We got to find gonna it. Google it. Yeah. You, you Google it. And um, now that you're Googling how old Britney Spears is, we're going to talk about why there is not 39. Okay, so she's younger than me, but she's not that young. Not a child. No. By any means. No. Anyway. Um, okay. She wrote the song. I didn't. What song? The, the song on the t-shirt. What's the song? Anyway. Okay, so let's talk about why we don't have more guitar shapes. And I want you to discuss this in the comments. Okay, we get obviously be nice. But here's the thing. We really only have a few basic shapes. And so the technical reasons are probably because there are certain shapes that make sense. Like how many shapes can you make of a guitar? Um, well, the answer is infinite. Really, technically. Um, and the tone wood freaks will all, all get into like, well, yeah, but the SG sounds different from the Les Paul. And we know that's not the reason I'm just using it as an example. Um, I really want to do a video where we cut pieces off of a guitar and decide that it all sounds the same or does it? I don't know. Um, Daryl Braun did one, but he did it wrong because he didn't isolate Anyway, he, he did it wrong and he gave up, he gave up the, um, everything's creaking and banging. Something's going on. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's our jacks are creaking. Probably not good for the camera. Yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> our hydraulic jacks that hold us up, sometimes they creak when the temperature changes. So anyway. I really feel like uh, I want to do a video where we take like a Strat or a Telly or something and we just cut pieces off of it and we do a blind test and see if the tone changes at all. Um, my guess is that it will not change enough to make much of a difference. Even if it does, then that's a differentiation. That means that even if it does, but let's say it does make a difference and you say, well, a guitar in the shape of a Superman logo. Uh, sounds different than a shape of a guitar made out of a Batman logo because the shape of the wood is different, whatever, which the Batman logo would be better, obviously, but the difference is the difference. And so therefore you would have a Ford versus a Chevy. You would have a whatever versus a whatever, and it would make a lot of sense. And we would have different shape guitars doing different things. I don't think that's the real reason though we have a super chat i see that i don't know i i need a, a repertoire of we'll come up with some sound effects because you guys deserve it thanks adam i really Thank really you, adam. that's really nice really appreciate that very very much um it would be more fun if we read all the comments very passive aggressively because you deserve it because you deserve it uh-oh. 
Another super, super chat. chat. Guitar shapes are limited to the ergonomics and fundamental playability of an instrument. That is one. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Ivan, for the for the super chat. That is one very good reason. However, I don't think it's the only reason, and I don't think it's the main reason. Here's the reason. The reason we only have a few shapes is the same reason Gibson sues because somebody copies it. Because it is all you will buy. That's the real reason. I could make a shape, a guitar, in the shape of a Batman logo only, although I couldn't because it's trademarked. <laughs> I can make Bad a example. I can make a Dylan Tox Tone logo shaped guitar and it would sound amazing and I could probably make it, you know, cuz it's got the Y that comes down this way so that would sit, you know, it would be the crotch part and then the D would come up and it, we could make we could make Dylan Tox Tone logo guitars and they would be ergonomically if you look if you think about it. I mean, all right. Okay. Let's just look at it really quick. There it is in the corner of the screen. If the neck came off the D to the left, right? You could you could make ergonomically with some modifications an ergonomically correct Dylan Toxtone logoed guitar. It would work. Okay. The reason we don't is because nobody would buy it. It's the same reason why Gibson sues everybody that looks makes a guitar that looks halfway like anything the reason they can sue people is because they know that their shapes that they own rule everything and if somebody tries to make something a little different i've tried it i've tried to make guitars that were really nice looking but not quite a jazz master not quite a strat not quite a Les Paul, and the snobbery folks just like, nah, 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 I'm not going to buy it. The big brands have tried to make really cool shapes. Uh, the Meteora, for example. Um, what are some other ones? Get in the comments and name right now. Somebody said that signature Paul Gilbert Ibanez gets laughed at and he's a rock guitar god. And that is a fantastic looking guitar. Um, it's like a Tallman slash Iceman sort of thing, right? And it's a weird shape, but it's ergonomically correct. He likes it. He did it for a reason and it makes sense. But nobody, but yeah, people laugh at him for playing a weird shape. Whatever you just said. Modern. The, the Gibson Modern? Or the... EVH, Ernie Ball Music Man, the Modern. Mm-hmm. Built guitars. Built? Yeah, well, the reason built... Okay, so let's talk about built. Reverend. The reason I will... And I'm not a peghead snob. Dan Electro, horn-shaped thingy played by all-female surf bassist. <laughs> That's a great Oh, yeah, that thing that looks sort of like a shield because it's got this weird... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Iceman? Yeah, the Iceman. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, these are all fantastic examples. St. Vincent Steinberger designs. Yes. Y'all are awesome tonight. Yes. These, these are all excellent examples. But the thing is, is they're all niche examples. They're mm -hmm. all a guitar. Um, if I can only afford to have two, I'm not going to have a St. Vincent. Well, I am, because I think it's amazing. I really want one of those. Um, another example. So let's talk about this. Let's take this even further. Body shapes. What? Let's go. Let's go. Body shapes is one thing. Peg head shapes is even another. Oh, yeah. So let's put a 3x3 three three on a strat-shaped body and call it a PRS, and everybody friggin' loses their mind. Because it's not what it's supposed to be. And I'm like, that's the coolest thing ever. That's the sentence in a nutshell right there. What? Not what it's supposed to it's be. It's not what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Exactly. Um, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, that sort of... Okay, and let's get back to built. 
I am not normally very, like, snobby about this stuff. But Built has the ugliest peg heads ever made known to man. Personally. B-I-L-T. Yeah. Personally, I think they are the weirdest looking thing. But they are very unique and the people that like them really like them. So I do get it. But there are... And are they the ones, too, with, like, the lopsided pick guards? Yeah, see that? I don't see what's wrong with that peg head. Well, okay, so the reason I don't like it is because in person it's huge. It's, it feels it like it's this big. long. Yeah, it doesn't look but proportionate. But I like that they have that contour that matches the body. That's pretty sick. Yeah. Um, let's it's see. It's pretty sick. I'll tell you what. I don't play guitar, by the way. It's all aesthetics to me. Right? So, here, hang on. But this is the real reason. I mean, this is the... Um, here. Let's go ahead and share a screen because we got to talk about this. Um, must be <laughs> this one. All right. Yeah. See that funky pig head? So here's the thing. What's, what happens is that's a fairly, that's a fairly uh, standard jazz mastery sort of shape, but it's not. It's stretched and pushed and, you know, it's not perfectly a jazz master shape. But then they put that peg head on there and people are like, nope, not going to do it. Because it's not exactly like a jazz master. There have been many, many times where I have tried to modify the shape of a telecaster and people flip out because it's not a telecaster. It's not telecaster enough. It's not traditional enough. And 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 there's gonna be many of you who are gonna get in the comments and be like, well, I would buy any kind of weird shaped guitar because I think it's cool. But we have 68 people on right now. And they're probably selling a thousand Telecasters a day. So, just about. Isn't that what I said the last time when we were talking about numbers? If they're selling... It's one to a hundred to one? Is a hundred to one. I don't know what and you And they were selling said. like... They were making like a hundred Jazzmaster Acoustasonics and it was a hundred to one, so that would be a thousand. Okay. Okay, yeah. So, for the latest thing I heard is that they're making about a thousand and selling about a thousand Telecasters a day. So we've got seventy-four people here, and if all seventy-four of us—and I know it's not all seventy-four of us—I know there are some of you who are like, "I'm only going to play super traditional shapes," and that's okay. That's totally fine. That's totally fine. There's no wrong answer to that. You play what you want to play, and you love what you want to love. I'm not talking down about what people like. Absolutely not at all. But you cannot, in one side of your mouth, be like, why aren't they making any cool shapes? And then being like, all I'm going to play is a Telecaster. Well, you just answered your own question. Because if I make a weird shape, and you're a Telecaster guy who only plays Telecasters and is not willing to try something new, then I'm not going to make a new shape. Well, nobody's made anything cool yet. Well, they have. People have made lots of cool shapes. But the problem is, is that they are not selling. They don't sell, you know. And, you know, um, the St. Vincent is a good example. I'm a fan of her as a player. And I'm a fan of weird guitars, so I'm going to like that guitar. That doesn't mean that it will become a standard um, in, in the industry. That doesn't mean that it'll become a standard in the industry. And the thing is, is that guitars are not, this is just because we are creatures of habit. This is not, uh, this is, it's not unique to guitars, right? Like, um, car, I'm a car guy, obviously. So people, are flipping out right now because Tesla is putting like 
a kit Knight Rider kind of steering wheel in the new Tesla Plaid version of the Tesla Model uh, Model S. I think it's really cool. Uh, you know, Mike Resendiz is on, and he's going to be like, I'm drooling about anything Tesla because he loves Tesla stuff, and he really wants that Tesla truck that looks like bad origami. Um, <laughs> It does. Oh my gosh. It looks like bad origami. But the reason it's weird and the reason it's not going to catch on, and the reason actually electric guitar, electric cars have taken so long to catch on is because, A, got to make them comfortable and easy. And I don't mean comfortable to ride in. I mean, like, it's, they've got to be easy and they've got to be easy to live with, just like a Telly or a Strat or a Les Paul or an SG, right? So the ergonomics and the design and everything's got to be easy to live with. Number one, that's getting better. But number two, it's just too weird for some people. And they and there are early adopters like Mike who has a Tesla and he loves it and he'll buy anything Tesla. But the the amount of early adopter minded folks, and I, this is an interesting thing. What's that guy's name? Um, there's some dude, I forget what his name is. Uh, he talks on the internet all the time. He's got glasses. He's a TED Talks guy. Anyway, a guy that I listen to a bunch. And he has a whole thing about how this the whole bell curve of early adopters and the people that are just in the middle who are all going to play tellies and strats. But the, the folks that are early adopter brains who are like, this is a weird thing. I think I want to try it. It's only really like 10% of people or less that are willing to try weird stuff that is not normal. And then as a result of that, the big companies who own the norm, so Gibson and Fender and Martin and, you know, I guess, yeah, Gibson and Fender and Martin are probably excellent examples, uh, are, they own the middle and they're like, okay, we're going to defend the middle and we're going to sue everybody who copies the middle. Les Paul shapes, SG shapes, all that kind of stuff. Well, obviously, we know Fender can't because they waited too long, but either way, this is why Gibson defends the middle because they can, because they know that they own the middle and they know that you're going to buy the middle and you're not going to venture out of that norm. And so if you want to see new stuff, if you want to see guitar pushed forward, then you have to try new stuff and you have to pay the money um, and support the companies and, support the change this truck is really loud that's a motorhome it's a diesel the engine is like right outside our window so yeah um yeah i mean it's just uh it's an interesting it's an interesting subject um kiss had that axe shaped guitar yeah and actually didn't he try he tried to actually Trademark the word X. I thought a guitar was an X. So dumb. I hate that. And I, I don't want to make everybody mad all in the same night. You just walked right into that one. I don't like that word as it pertains to a guitar. I'm just saying I think it's a dumb word as it pertains to a guitar. A guitar is not an X. A guitar is a guitar. An X is for chopping wood or throwing out a wall at weird restaurants while you drink. Only if you're drinking. Right. All right, you want some more questions? Yeah, are you let's, still do, let's do some more questions. This is fun. All right, this is going back. I guess he just ran it because he wanted to run it. Okay. Jack Tripper. I'm okay. I'm gonna trip my way through this one too because I'm not sure if I understand. If a dual gang pot is used as a blend volume control for two pickups where the middle lugs get the lead wire from the pickups can i follow that with a master volume pot without creating a loss of high frequency okay so the short answer is no i don't know that what you just said will work but I don't know that it won't either because the, just FYI, everybody, when it comes to wiring stuff, 
uh, I'm really good at it if I can sit down and literally draw it on a piece of paper. If you hit me with that, like right now, it's really hard for me to visualize. Like I literally have to draw it out. Um, in some of our Patreon workshops and stuff, I'll actually like get out the pen and draw on the screen and like literally like work it out and see if the circuit's gonna work. Um, because my mind can't process you just telling me, okay, if this wire goes to here, then it goes to here, then is it gonna work? So I have a real hard time with that. Um, I, I, I do figure it out, but it takes, takes a minute. So I apologize if I can't totally answer this question. Fundamentally though, your question, anytime you stack two pots together, they are two resistors and you will lose some high frequency. Do whatever you're gonna do with your circuit with the least amount of components possible. And redundancy will rob you of signal. So in a passive guitar with no preamps or anything, the more components you put in it, you are just taking away from the signal. You never, and this is something that people have a hard time getting their head around, in a passive guitar, you never ever add to the signal that the pickups create. It is always some sort of resistance, capacitance, or the combination of both for a filter. And it is always taking away. So when you add components in a passive guitar, you will be re removing a little bit every time you do it. So when you design your circuit, and I, I apologize for not knowing 100% for sure if the circuit that you're talking about right now will work unless I visualize it on a piece of paper, just know that if you can do this, what you wanna do without the extra piece, it will pay off for you. Cool, that's a good question though, actually. Ding, And your chat. Thanks, Adam. In your opinion, was Parker Shape the reason they failed? Whew. Thanks, Adam. Thank you, Adam. Leave that up there for a second. You got him. You stumped him a little bit. Uh, no, not a stump thing. I'm not familiar with the management of their company. Small, and I will say that small guitar companies oftentimes We've seen it with our clients who aren't our clients anymore because they're gone <laughs> because they're artist folks or they're super nerdy guitar folks, but they're not very good business folks. So sometimes that's the reason why they fail. Uh, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know about Parker, but one of the other things possibly, possibly is that all of the alternative materials that they used as well, like their carbon fiber get their carbon fiber necks in the earlier mm. you know early development you know we're not talking about 2021 where they really got a handle on this stuff so crazy shapes really wacky and very very complicated as you know adam because me and you worked on this project together very wacky circuits um with a lot of pieces the guitars are not cheap to make they are not um yeah, that's what BC Rich said. Parker guitars were incredibly difficult and expensive to manufacture, so they were on really thin margins. Yes. Which is hard as a business model. Yes, for absolutely. Anyone. Yeah, and I, that's a, this is a great thing to think about because I don't think people understand how much it costs to make a guitar. When people, we have a whole, we've talked about this many times on this channel, we have a whole uh, live video that we really dove into this a couple of years ago but you know people get really bummed out because Gibson Les Paul's cost um, you know 2300 bucks or whatever or an American Strat costs almost two thousand dollars now well I'm gonna here to tell you um, I'm a one-man show and my guitars cost two thousand dollars too and I don't have the overhead that those folks have. And um, my pickups, you know, you can buy a Dragonfire pickup or you can buy a GFS pickup for $35. I can't sell you a pickup for 35 bucks. 
my pickups are 139 for a, a humbucker. So, and it's not because I'm greedy. It's, it's because it costs to do business. Um, and people aren't very sympathetic to the amount of margin that it takes to function as a business. Um, they think that, you know, if a guy who owns a guitar company can make a couple hundred bucks off of each guitar, then he's doing good. Or, you know, well, Strat pickups only cost you $10 to make. How come they're 99 bucks? Well, they don't cost me $10 to make. They cost me a lot more than that because the business costs money to run. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's a thing. It, it really is a thing. And that's a, that's a n whole nother subject and a whole nother day. But I really wish folks would understand the cost of doing business and understand how much and why, for example, even though, um, a player Stratocaster from Mexico and an American performer or only about two, three hundred dollars apart in cost, but they're almost identical the same guitar. And people are like, that's way too expensive for a Mexico guitar. It's not. The labor is the only thing that's different. The wood's the same, the processes are the same, the CNC's machines still cost $250,000, whether they're in Mexico or they're in America. Um, you know, that's the thing we're, you know, that's a thing that people, the cost of doing business is a real thing. And I wish people would be more sympathetic to it. That's, we could go around and around about this all night, but that's a big one. Thanks for asking that question, Adam. And thanks for the super chat. Mm -hmm. Richard Virginia asked, how do quiet coil P90s work? They're a stacked coil. So they have two coils on top of each other. Um, just like a vintage noiseless single coil by Fender, same thing. Um, two coils stacked. Yep. Cool. Um, Spike asks, have you tested easy slide to shield? A very good continuity and get flashes issues solved painting the whole thing in and out looks like a delorean now polished to 1500 grit lol easy slide is that what it's called that's what he said easy slide to shield easy slide graphite based coating did it say at tractor at tractor supply so is that a no we've never used it i've never used it but i'll tell you what right now I'm going to go to Tractor Supply and buy some, and we will do a video about it because I've never used it. I don't know. So thanks, uh, Yeah, thank you so much. I'm actually going to leave that tab open so I remember to check it later. Um, yeah, that's cool. Very cool question. Oh, yeah, we'll check it out. Right. New Gun Guy says, ever put together a P90 with a Strat pickup to make a humbucker just to see what happens? Um... No, I mean, I've put them in guitars that way. I've put a Strat and a P90 in a guitar, and it sounds awesome. Um, but I, I don't typically package uh, differing coils, like different pickup coils together, like a humbucker and a P90 coil or a whatever. What's that, Um, you guys, what's, you know, you're, you know what I'm about to ask. What's that? P90 with the little Firebird bobbin next to it. What do they call that? Um, that's a, everybody wants me to make those, and I'm not going to make them, but they're really cool. I forget what they're called. Ready for another one? Yeah. RJ's Cave said, I just picked up a Harley Benton DC Jr., and I'm looking for something hotter in the P90 department. I prefer El Ninko 5 Magnets. I'm assuming he means, do you have any like that? Absolutely. Um, please go to Dylan Talks Tone and check out the P90s that we have there because they're that's exactly what they are. 
-hmm. and you will they're they're wound to vintage spec but when you say hotter i know what you mean uh you want that thing to just rip and it will and i know that there are people in the comments that have my p90s so chime in and let this guy know um thank you for the question and uh, let him know how you feel about those P90s because they're awesome. Um, they're really, really good. Uh, the P-Rail, that's what it was called. Um, thank you, Doc. I appreciate that. So Michael, Missed you last week, by the way, Doc. Mike Resendiz wants to know, what size T-shirt do you wear? Uh, I wear a large T-shirt. <laughs> I wear a large T-shirt. All right, let's see. I don't even want to know why he's asking. Well, he asked a question. Yep. So speaking of Doc, he I told him I missed him too. He said I haven't been able to tune in lately. Life has been crazy, but tonight I can just relax. Tell Dylan I got an RS5. I don't know what that Wait, is. who? Doc. Oh, man. You know what RS5 is? I just said I don't. Oh. It's an Audi? Mm. And I think the RS5 has a 4 liter twin turbo, right? Like 540 horse or something. Um, That's do we pretty have... sweet. Uh, let's see. I need to check something really quick. You're not ready for another question? I am. You can keep going. I want to look at our chat really fast because we have, first of all, I don't know why it's not monetized. Dang it. Let's fix that. And I think we have, a... somebody's got a janky golf cart out there. All right. The next question. Keep going. Yeah. Hackney sack. 321? Yes. The stagnant guitar body design will change once 3D printing hits the mainstream. Some young people will come up with tons of new ideas, at least as a fad on the future version of TikTok in 20 plus years. Dude, I hope so. I absolutely hope so. I hope exactly that's what happens. I hope that kids that are 10 and 11 and 12 years old now that are playing guitar and learn how to use a 3D printer, start doing crazy, wacky stuff. And they start putting stuff in there that doesn't belong, and they start doing crazy things. And I, that's exactly what I hope, because that's what it's, that's what it's going to take. I mean, I, I really feel like that's what it's going to take to push us ahead and really just take over, you know, the entire, the entire thing. Um, I really do hope that. Um, I'm really going through here just because I... How come I can't see those comments? I don't know how you can see those comments, but I just removed some politics. I just, I don't do well with putting politics in our... Everybody knows on this channel that if you... Uh, are super hateful in the comments or if you talk about politics uh, we delete them immediately because we don't do that here all right <clears throat> i b j i yes will line six variax modeling guitars ever truly replicate those classic tones um i don't know but i don't think that is their full intent I think that they have come up with, and so here's, here's the thing about anything that models, anything that rep, like you say, replicates a tone. Why do we need to replicate a tone of a guitar that we have? Why do we need to create a guitar that makes a sound of a guitar that we already have makes no sense to me i don't think that's the goal of the line sex variax guitar 
the goal of the Line 6 Variax guitar is to make sounds and to make things, types of music, sounds um, that you couldn't make with a regular guitar. Uh, if you go listen, well, and you, you, I'm sure you already know who they are because you even brought this guitar up. And um, the guitar player for 12 Foot Ninja from from, a lap, from uh, Australia is an excellent example of a guy who knows how to make sounds that he can make only on that guitar because he can tune digitally. He can tune, make tunings that are impossible to do on a regular guitar. He can do various things. He can play only certain strings. I wish people would stop looking at the technology that's coming out as a replacement for vintage technology and can start to look at it more as an addition to the toolbox. Um, Kemper, for I had a Kemper for years. I loved it. I have a tube amp now. So that doesn't mean I hate my Kemper. And when I had my Kemper, it doesn't mean I hated tube amps. It meant that I wanted to try different tools. Um, and I wanted to try various things. And to me, that's what's really, really important, is to don't think about something replacing something you're adding something that's it do you think a guitar pickup like the Illumitones would work good in a bass i don't know ivan you have one you should try it <laughs> i don't know if he has it yet i guess i might have just spoiled that so what i've been doing is all the folks that have, you know, I get stuff sent to me for reviews and whatever. And because we have a motor home, I don't have room for it all. So randomly, I will just put something in somebody's order. So if you, um, pay, Patreon and YouTube and stuff, they get kind of mad at me when I start to do these random giveaways. It's like against a lot of rules and stuff. And so it's harder to do just giveaways. But so what I've been randomly doing is just like, I'll throw a pickup, like a, those Illumitones that I got for free, I'll just throw one randomly in an order or I'll put a, you know, whatever somebody gave me for a That's review. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah. So I put I put one of those Illumitones in, in one of his orders earlier uh, this month. So. All right. Sergey wants to know. Yeah. Still talking about the advice for his guitar, I guess. So a center punch humbucker match set would be a good set to start with. So I'm assuming he found your website. Yes, dude. Yes. Uh, it's a Les Paul style guitar. Um, put, I think he said, put um, a coil split on each pickup and just go to town, man. I think you will totally love it. I really do. Um, I really, really do. I want to make sure that the folks over on Facebook... Hmm. So we're broadcasting actually to Facebook and to YouTube at the same time. I haven't looked at Facebook. I didn't realize. Oh, I did, and they should be showing up in here too if they comment from mm -hmm. Facebook. But I don't want anything important over that. Not everybody's important, but I'm just saying. I'm missing anybody? Yeah. 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 Go ahead with another question. David Carter have. wants to know. I'm glad he came up with a question. He made a comment earlier. He watches all these videos and has questions, and now that he has a chance to ask questions, he can't, can't think, think of, of anything. <laughs> so, awesome. I'm glad you thought of a question, David. Yeah, thanks so much. David Carr, do you know what are the humbuckers that have a JM, not P90 footprint? Um, I've seen mm -hmm. just discovered those. And what is the drink tonight? Um, I... I um I'll some comments from Facebook. It's funny. I'll share those in a minute. Um so I'll give you a little something here. Just for for Ivan. Oh he didn't know. Oh my gosh, he didn't know. Okay, so the whole Jazz Master shaped humbucker thing. Here's what you can do. It's a little bit late, but it works. You take humbucker mounting screws and buy 
Let's see. By regular Jazz Master covers with um with no holes in them. People said our signal is out of whack. What does that mean? Mm, I don't know. Signal is really bad. Signal's out of whack. Oh no, signal weak. Sounds auto tuned. Uh, I didn't know we were auto tuned. Wait, is that just? Oh, signal's getting really choppy here. Oh, you know why? I know why. That's why. Because you're using your phone. Probably because I was using my phone. Sorry, maybe it'll get better. Everybody's like choppy choppy. Video looks eight bit, so we're eight bit and auto tuned. We're so retro. <laughs> nice. Uh, the signal is really bad. Yeah, that's might happen because of I don't even know how long you've been alive. Alive? I mean, live. I know how long you've been alive. <laughs> so okay, so uh, here's what you can do: is you can actually take any humbucker and put it in a Jazzmaster cover. You just have to drill a couple holes and run the mounting screws down through the cover, and then just bolt the humbucker to the cover, and then mount the whole thing in the guitar like you would mount a normal Jazzmaster. I've done it before, and it's awesome. All right, everybody says it's better. It's because I was using my phone. Doc said it's 4.2 liter NAV8 8250 Redline. It's an NA car. Oh, and it's a coupe, right? RS5 is a coupe. I don't know. As far I'm as I know. I'm just telling you what he's... Because it's an Audi A5 with a gnarly motor. That's, That's cool. cool. I'm going to have to come visit you. I want to drive that. <laughs> I don't think we can go to Canada yet. People are coming here from Canada. I think we have to quarantine for two weeks if we go to Canada, is what the problem is. That is a problem. Yeah. I don't want to stay in my motorhome for two weeks without leaving. Anyway. Let's see. David Kornblatt says, thoughts on El Nico 4. That's all I, he said. I use them. <laughs> Sometimes. All right. As E123. Why do you think there is no Mustang body with a normal scale neck? I don't know. I've always wondered that. Um, so some of those guitars, like the Mustang and the Les Paul Jr. And were, were made for kind of, they're, they're meant to be kind of beginner guitars. And I know that they've, become kind of a cult classic guitar now right but um i think they were really more beginner guitars smaller frets shorter scale you know you 24 24 inch scale on a mustang means um way easier to play super slinkier strings the shorter the scale easier to play theoretically um and so maybe that's why and uh yeah i don't know it would be it, you know it'd be interesting and I, we haven't seen it yet is one of those um, parallel universe things where they put like jazz masters and jazz master pickups in a telly and put a tremolo on it or whatever. It would be fun to see a a Mustang with a twenty five and a half inch scale and some wacky pickup setup in it with a Strat tremolo. You know what I mean? Like that'd be cool. Maybe they'll do it at some point because I agree. That guitar is very cool, but I'm also not a fan of the 24-inch scale, so I think it would be cool. I think they that'd be a neat thing to do. Jonathan Knapp wants to know, would you like me to send my SG to you and you can tighten up any further mistakes Gibson made? It might be show material. Um, there was a time where we used to do that, where we used to let people send us guitars, but now, because we live in a motorhome, it is not practical. Um, I get people all the time. It, the amount of people that say, I want to order pickups from you, but I don't know how to do it. Can I just send you the whole thing? I'm like, it happens every week. People email us that every week. And it would be cool. It'd be fun, but it's just really not practical. Plus, I'm kind of to the point where I don't want to be responsible for other people's guitars anymore. You know, like, especially because of how we live now you know like 
we just don't have any room. I have right now on board, I have one, two, three, four, four guitars, the GGBO parts and pieces. I'll tell you what's happening with that in a few minutes. And the Patreon project telly mm -hmm. that is getting way out of hand. Um, so for everybody that doesn't know, our Patreon workshop is the fourth Sunday of every month. And it is also the fifth Sunday of every month if there's a fifth Sunday. Except this week because it's Memorial Day. So we're bumping it to the first Sunday of June. So if you want to get a free Ooh, class, bonus in June. That's what I was gonna say. If you want to join uh, in June, you're gonna get two because you're gonna get the one at the beginning of June and the one at the end of June. We don't normally do that, but just the way the holidays fell, um, that's what we're gonna do. It's gonna be pretty fun. We're building a guitar from scratch. Um, not from scratch. It's a, it's a kit, but. Um, we're doing some crazy things with it, and I actually decided to do a couple of things this week that I have not even told the patrons yet, because I want to surprise them with it. Um, but it's going to be orange. We do know that. It's mm -hmm. going to have a matching peg head. We do know that. Mm -hmm. It's going to have a humbucker in the neck, and it's going to have a double blade Barden style tele pickup in the bridge, because I never make those. Nor does he like colored uh, headstocks. So I never like colored. Pushing him out of his boundaries a and, little bit. And it's going to have all black hardware. And I can't stand all black hardware. I but, think it's hilarious. But this guitar, amazing. this guitar is going to be awesome. Black and orange? It's going to be black and orange. Oh, so I like that. Um, we're going we're gonna to do that. And then I, what I told you the other day with the bridge, we're mm -hmm. going to surprise everybody with something about the bridge it's going to be awesome so um what we're doing with that is we're going to build it over a few months because we're going to try to do as much of it as we can live during those workshops on the fourth sunday of every month and so um, i'm hoping that that's going to work out and we're going to be able to drill and do fret work and wine pickups and stuff and it's all going to be live with you in a zoom meeting basically it's going to be awesome so I meant to say that earlier. Um, are you a 427 or 396 guy? Oh. Um, David Kornblatt asked twice. I think I've seen it. So he really 427 or 396. It depends. On? If we're talking LS or not. If it's an LSX block... I am Texas Speed 427 all the way. If it is not an LS and it is a like an old Chevelle or something, then I'm a 396 guy. If it's a Corvette, I'm a 427 guy. Uh, if we're going like muscle car stuff, um, I'm a 427 guy if it's a Corvette. I used to have a 166. If it is... Uh, Anything else but a Corvette, I'm a 396 guy, but I'm actually not a Chevy guy at all. Um, I'm a Pontiac guy. So, what I really like is uh, like the 428 from the Swiss cheese um, Catalina, and I am a GTO freak. So, there you go. More Pontiac than... And olds too. I built some Oldsmobiles too. Um, but yeah, if you're going to go 427, it's got to be a LSX, like the new stuff. 396 for all the vintage Chevy stuff. There you go. I like that stuff though. Michael Arona741 asked, How can I make my Fender Tele HH a country machine without routing out my guitar? Any ideas? You have to route it. He said without. I mean, you know, that's the thing. It's got to fit in the hole. He so. must already know the answer is why I asked the question, right? Well, is there a way around it? I mean, you could put blades in it, double blades in it, like a Barden style thing. It's not going to sound like a humbucker, though. It's going to be a compromise. 
Um, I always say this, and people don't believe me, but it's true. Um, if you want a humbucker, get a humbucker. If you want a single coil, get a single coil. There is no in-between. And I know that there's people that make what I call compromise pickups, and they sound okay. But you always put that caveat on it. Like, it's pretty good for this. Pretty good for the money is my least favorite saying in all of guitar world. Um, besides, ooh, that's so resonant. That's probably my least favorite. <laughs> but um, don't compromise. Don't compromise. Like, if you want humbuckers in a telly, get a kit for nothing, like 150 bucks on Amazon, and route it up and try it. And cut it up, man. Like, cut it up. Like, get out of your own, you know, this has to be a telly or I don't want to don't want to mess up this guitar or whatever. And start another kit or something and, and, and experiment with it. But don't compromise. Don't compromise. That's probably one of my biggest pet peeves. Well, I have a lot of them <laughs> about guitar stuff. But one of the biggest ones I get, like in my email and stuff, is when people will, will email me and they'll be like, I'm building my dream guitar. What is the cheapest thing you have? And I'm like, A, I don't have cheap stuff. We have good stuff. And B, if it's your dream guitar, why are you cheaping out on it? Like, well, I put GFS pickups in it. They're pretty good for the money in my dream guitar. And I'm like, Okay, like, uh, you do whatever you got to do. I mean, obviously, you, you, whatever you got to do to start playing and keep playing and play all the time, do whatever you got to do. But if you are trying to build your thing, don't start your question with um, a compromise. You know what I mean? Because you know, you'll always think, and I'm not trying to, it's not a talking down to people and how they feel about their own stuff. It's a, you'll always think of that when you're playing that guitar. Like, it'll rob you of like the potential for inspiration mm -hmm. from that instrument because you'll always be like well i really want to write this song on this guitar and it's pretty good it's pretty good even though it has it you'll always have that like footnote in your brain when you're Which trying to set the limit yeah, yeah. It, it'll you know end up limiting you if you spent the extra 40 bucks or whatever you know you went the whatever because it's usually only that much money like this guitar stuff, I know some of it can be expensive, but the difference, like the delta between a cheap pickup and a good pickup is not that far. A cheap pick, a bridge and a good bridge is not that far. And I know that once it adds up, then you spent, you know, $900 instead of $600 and 300 bucks can be a lot of money for some people. But if it's a guitar that you're going to keep for the rest of your life and then you like amortize that over your life, that's what I look at. I look at like... When I bought my last acoustic guitar, I spent more money on it than any guitar I've ever bought in my life. But I thought, you know, it perfectly fits my needs. It sounds amazing. And I'm going to probably have it for... I, build, I buy guitars, I buy acoustic guitars thinking that I might keep them for like 20 years. Then that extra little bit of money that I spent for that instrument doesn't sound so bad when you amortize it out like that. And when it's something that you're really, really proud of, you're going to make better music on it. So don't compromise. That's a little bit of a tangent, but that's, a, uh, I really am passionate about that. K Cole 4001, maybe a dumb question. I doubt it. Would a, RWRP does that mean reverse round or reverse polarity <laughs> strap middle pickup in parentheses to be hum canceling yes. still retain the out of phase tone so it will be in phase if it is reverse round reverse polarity properly but in the notch positions it'll still give you that kind of quacky sound like you want burp, 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 burp. The Jefferson Lee. 
No question, just thanking you for a calming end to a long, unusual day that ended with me covered in mosquito killer lawn spray. That sounds like a fun <laughs> the story. The RV life is calling. That is amazing. Oh my gosh. Uh, David Kornblatt, thank you for the super chat, by the way. That's uh, what? David Kornblatt says, oh. best year GTO 64 to 74. Um, so I have a friend that's a big time GTO nut and we built a bunch of cars together. And he had a 74, it was really fun. Uh, put a 455 with a shaker, the whole deal. The Ventura body style one, super fun. That car would do like 11s. It was really fun, that was like 20 years ago. Um, but the best, the best GTO is a 65. Duh. I mean, you know, square grills, vertical headlights. To me, that's the best. 64 being a second. However, the 63 Tempest with the Tri Power 389 or the Slant 4 is also very cool, but those are not real GTOs. I could geek about Pontiac stuff for hours. I love that the Jefferson Lee, so apparently he's just tuning in. And he saw the Whitney shirt, and his first gut song is the same one we, oh, really? we were talking about earlier. Yeah. We, we covered that. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, new gun guy wants to know, what do you think about dummy coils for hum canceling? So, I'll be honest with you. I have not actually really experimented with that very much. Um, I have played the, is it Sirs or Andersons? I think it's Sir that has one in the back panel. And then they have that like little thicker one or something that's got the thing built into it. I've never really experimented with those much and I keep saying that I'm going to do a video where we experiment with a dummy coil. And I just, I guess I need to add it to the list because I'm about a month out on content right now. So I guess I just need to add it to the list. Um, also, one thing I want to ask you, so, the answer to your question is I don't know, but stay tuned because I really, really want to try it. Also, um, we, we've added a couple new things to the content. One is the news, the gear news on Tuesday mornings. What do you think of that? And let me know what you think of it because I'm having a lot of fun making them. Um, and if a video is fun to make, it's that's like half the battle for me. So let me know what you think of that gear news thing. Um, the other thing is, I have this vision, okay, for the channel. And one of the problems, and I've talked about this a little bit recently, one of the problems with this channel is we get super technical on stuff and it's like a, it's like a blessing and a curse. We get super technical with stuff and it's fun, right? The curse to it is, or the blessing to it is, is that the blessing of it is, is that it's like evergreen to content because when we make a video about pots, it could last forever because that technology doesn't really change and that video will be applicable or still relevant. Like 10 years from now, it'll still be relevant, right? The bad part of that is it doesn't keep me It doesn't keep me in the latest thing, like um, cell phones and stuff, like cameras and all those videos, like all those channels. They stay kind of at the top because they're always talking about the latest thing. And I was like, you know what? What, what would be fun is to take that technical breakdown, like we always break everything down, like pickups and stuff. Well, let's just take new guitars and break them down. Like, should you buy, so, so tomorrow's video, coming out and I hope you guys watch it because it's it was really kind of hard to make because there's a lot of details but it was also really fun to make the Fender Ultra Lux series that just came out like the Fender top line guitar should you buy one is it worth it how is it different from regular Fenders and really break that down and then maybe next week I'll do uh, I don't know whatever new thing came out and compare it to the old one, really break it down, do that sort of stuff. Now, the folks that have seen this video, it's already on Patreon. Um, it comes out tomorrow. Um, they liked it. But let me know what you think of it. 
And also, so comment on it tomorrow when you watch it, if you would. Um, and, and let me know what you think of it. And let me know what you want to see in that segment and how, what kind of information you want to know. So if there's a new guitar came out and what's important to you? Like, what is the thing that you want to know? Is it fret size? Is it the way the neck feels? Is it what the pickups are? You know, whatever. What is the thing that kind of grabs you and that you want to know about so that I make sure that I include those details when I do these videos. So anyway, that's something I've been meaning to, to ask all of you because I know, you know, there's 63 of you here and I know that most of you are fairly regular. So you'll give me a good, good impression of that. How many electric guitars have you now versus all the ones you've had? Versus all the ones I've had? Okay. So Personal I, guitars is different though, right? Like, yeah, so that's a weird question for me because I used to build David them. David Kornblatt. <clears throat> David, I used to build them. Um, I still still build a few. Um, but I used to build like 20 a year. And we would, I'll, sometimes we would build like six at a time. And I would have like, if you look at some of my older videos when we used to own a house. And I had like a guitar shop kind of hanger set up in my living room and we would have like eight guitars on there. Um, so many times I would have eight or 12 at a time. Um, most of them were my builds. Uh, so the guitars that I own now, uh, we might as well go through this because this is something I've been actually been meaning to do a video like a my own rig rundown like of my own stuff because it changes so much so we'll start first with the two guitars that will never be sold they are my personal guitars that i mean i flip a lot of stuff so that we can keep content fresh right um, if i keep a guitar too long then i feel like it makes the youtube channel too boring so i try to flip it right now on the flipping block well we'll get to those in a minute the guitars that I will always keep and never, ever, 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 ever sell. I have an acoustic guitar that came from my dad's guitar shop when I was very, very young. It was given to my grandfather as a gift. You can buy a t-shirt for Burt's Guitar Shop in the store. That's right. Just saying. Um, it is a 1979 Sigma DM3, so it's like the Korean version of a D18. Um, I played that guitar all over the country. It has more frequent flyer miles on it. This is back when you, it was easy to fly with a guitar. I went all over. That guitar has thousands and thousands of miles on it. It has beach sand in it from Lake Superior, from the Gulf of Mexico, and both oceans in the case. It has stickers from all the airlines. I mean, that guitar has been everywhere. Um, and my grandfather just died this year uh, at... 89 years old or something. So I will always, 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 always keep that guitar. Um, the bridge did a weird thing and the top is a little bit bellied and stuff. So I don't play it live anymore. I used to gig it every weekend. I, that guitar, literally, I played it a lot. It still looks brand new. I really take care of my stuff. Um, the next guitar is a 1985 Fender Stratocaster Japanese. It's Japanese. With the, with the Kaler Series 1 locking tremolo, so it had a locking nut and a tremolo on it. My dad gave me that guitar um, in the mid-80s when I was barely a teenager. I, I don't know. I don't know how old I was, actually. Anyway, mid-80s, he gave me that guitar. Um, well, it's an 85, so it was only a couple years old, actually, when he gave it to me. And um, it's candy apple red with a rosewood fretboard, slim C neck. Um, I will never, and that guitar actually, actually I have the original pickups for that guitar are right up there. I uh, don't know why they're up there. They should be in storage, but they're up there. Um, that guitar, that Strat has the very first set of prototype Dylan pickup strap pickups in it that I ever made and they are still 
they've evolved a little bit since then, but they're still very close to what we make now. And it, that guitar sounds awesome. So those those are the two guitars that I own that are there. I don't travel with them. They're in Leslie's mom's closet. Like I don't travel with them at all. What else is in there? Um, I thought I had three in there, but I guess not. So I have those two. Um, my McPherson acoustic, my carbon fiber acoustic. That is my personal guitar that doesn't have anything to do with the channel. I just bought that for my own self because I used to have a breed love that I actually sold to Doug Santiniello. He's in the comments here. He owns that. He lives in Florida now or lives in Florida and he owns that guitar now. Um, but I bought a carbon fiber guitar because it's easier to travel with because you don't have to worry about humidity and all that. Uh, so that's my personal guitar. The Shoreline Gold Telecaster that we built in a live, we built that guitar in a live video. It's kind of a parts caster. Um, that's a Tele. That guitar is for sale right now. Probably like 800 bucks or something. Um, that guitar will go away and then we will get something in its place. Um, the 2021 Fender Roadhouse Stratocaster Deluxe it, in white doesn't have um, pickups in it anymore. It doesn't have uh, noiseless pickups in it anymore. It has my stuff in it. It has one of my loaded pickguards in it. Uh, that guitar is for sale. And then that guitar will get replaced with probably another Strat. Um, and then I own... I guess that's it for guitars that I actually own. I gave away the Les Paul. I gave away the Colos, actually. The white Colos. I gave away... I gave away a few things. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're down to now. And then we also have, of course, the GGBO guitar. So I'm going to be honest with you. The GGBO guitar is not going to get done in time. Um, we basically were too ambitious with it. And it turned into an insane project. Um, that is still going to be filmed. It is still, we are still treating it as if we are competing but it's probably not going to be done in time. No longer eligible to win. So we will probably not win anything, but we are still going to auction it and we are still going to donate the money to the charity and we're still going to make all the videos as if we were. Like I'm, I'm going to follow through with it all. However, the reason I decided to not stress about um, winning it and having it done in time is because I've had this vision for what this guitar is in my head for probably five years. This is something I've wanted to build. And I thought, okay, I could either be part of this thing and, and try to win it and be part of the, and, and, you know, like cash in on all the YouTube views. You know what I mean? Like that was the, cause that's why everybody does this stuff is cause it's like, oh, if so many people are going to see these, then somebody's going to see all my YouTube videos. You know, it's going to... You mean you don't need the exposure? Yeah, do it for the exposure, which is cool. And I, I wanted to be a part of it. But then I thought to myself, I was like, self? self? Uh, I was like, this is a, a guitar design. Speaking of original and speaking of something that's never been done the way I want to do it, I'm going to make sure that it's 100% right. And I actually kind of got inspired by Matt from Texas Toast because he's one of the judges. And he said, one of the things we're going to look at is obviously originality of design. But what really tripped it in my head was he said, we want to see things that can be scaled and made into a model in the future. And I was like, that is the challenging part. That anybody can make anything weird once. But to make it into something that you are going to love, we're going to auction it off. It's going to be cool. It's going to be one of a kind. But I'm also going to be able to make more of them. And I want to turn it into a thing. Okay, maybe I will only sell two or three of them a year. It's okay. Because I think it's really cool and it's something that I wanted to do. And I'm really inspired to build this design. But it was one of those things where you're like, okay. I got to just kind of like lay off the whole contest part and make sure that I can pull this thing off. And so 
it's just taken longer than I wanted. But you're still going to see all the content. You're still going to see everything. Um, and we are still going to auction it and give all the money to charity for, for number one. It'll be serial number 001, but there will be 002. And if you want one of these things, and you're going to want one, it's going to be available. So that's the story. Um, you didn't talk about what was funny on Facebook earlier. Yeah, because my phone screwed up, and I didn't want to ruin um, the... I, well, I didn't want to ruin the um, feed. And what made me think of it while you're looking that up is... Yeah. Oh, but I lost the comment. I am Somebody said... My, oh, the Jefferson Lee said, My lottery dream is to quit my job and learn to build guitars and brass instruments. I have always been stumped as to what headstock design I would use, and I've been to art school. What is left? So then people are talking about it. But what you me about that comment is to have a lottery dream where he could do his dream job, which then made me think, welcome to my random brain, you know, made me think, um, so for this in the chat, he and I are friends on Facebook, and he posted something today that's like a reshared of a memory on his timeline that really resonated with me and makes me think of that. Um, picture of two kids playing. You know, you always say, what do you want to be when you grow up? But it literally says, what do you want to be when you give up? And that is just like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, then it made me think he didn't tell us about Facebook. So Corey Alexander says that he loves his electric car. This is on our Facebook feed. Mm -hmm. And he also says, could you guys spread out? There are way too many of us in this room. I don't know what that means. That's somebody that else, funny. though. That's not Corey. That was Sweeney Marvin. Anyway, I just wanted to share a couple of the comments. Yeah. Are you there. social distancing in the YouTube feed, y'all? Good question. Very blurry picture and sound issues. Jason um, Albert has a really cool idea. He said, why don't you do a rig roast on guitars that you would never get rid of? I have three of my grandpa's 1949 arch top silver tones and two guitars my uncle gave me when I started playing. Oh, wow. Like that's those really memorable cool. guitars or sentimental. That's a cool idea. I like that Like one. narrow it down to the one you're never going to sell. I'd have to wait till we went back to Georgia because I don't even have those two guitars with me. Did you even participate in your own rig roast? I didn't. Anyway. I didn't. I should have. We should do those like twice a year or something. I agree. That was fun. It's not good for the podcast, but if you listen to the podcast, you should check out the YouTube if you want to see what was actually happening. Awesome. I've got 10 I'll never sell. Wow. Doug, make me, I want to know what they are. Yeah. Because I've seen Doug's collection. Well, I don't know. I haven't it seen could it. have changed. I mean, I was going to say, I haven't been in his house in like a year, so. Could be swapping to get his final 10. I don't know, yeah. He's got my breed love. He might have to come up off of that one of these days. I might want that back. No, no take backs. That's rude. I mean, I, you know. Maybe it's one of his ten. Have you ever had a guitar that you sold and that you don't necessarily regret selling, or maybe you do regret selling it, but then you're like, you call a guy back and be like, hey, you wouldn't want to sell a thing back to me, would you? That's a guitar that I, I might. I love that guitar. No regrets. I love that guitar. I really did. What's your favorite pickup made by someone else? Uh, that's super easy. Uh, the Lawler Wide Range. Yep. Because I love how gnarly it sounds. Um, it's just really... Did you unplug your mic? Did I? I don't know. I said that. Oh. Did you squish it? You did. He did. I did, unpl I did unplug my mic. Thank you. Um, so the Lawler Wide Range is the pickup that I would. Doug said he loves the breed love. Yeah, I know. He probably won't let off, off of it, will he? Ovation Deacon. Wow. 
I regret trading away my 84 Gibson Explorer. Yeah, sorry for the snap of plug. The microphone's probably. Oh. Oops. <laughs> sorry. I could have muted it and done it. I apologize. Um. All right, we're an hour and 40 minutes in. Y'all. We are. We are. We should probably. And um, I haven't seen a super chat, so that means we could probably wrap it up. Probably. Thanks for all the super chats, though. That yeah, was we really do appreciate it. I, amazing. I had, I had, yeah. I, it. Oh, I, I the, kid, I kid. I, yeah. All right, hang on. We got to show this one. Have you had a chance yet to check out the Fender Cunef wide ranges? Speaking of the Lawlers. Thank I've, you, Greg, for the super chat. Thanks, Greg, uh, so much. Um, I, I have not. And uh, that's actually on my list to buy. We probably will buy it with Patreon money. Um, maybe next month I'll buy a set of those. With That's what I do a lot of times. Like some of the stuff you see in the videos, I use the Patreon money for that. So... Um, Chances are that will be uh, on the list soon because I've been meaning to do it. This month is all the parts for this build that we're doing. Did, we don't have anything pending to mail, right? Did whoever Wayne Hussey did we mail their stuff? Lipstick. Um. No. Oh well, they okay. Definitely message him then. There's something they can't get, so they were asking, could you throw it in the box if you? Have... Oh yeah, shoot me an email, dude. Yeah. Um. So, funny story about that. That has to do with all... So, the angry phone call the other day to my supplier was, where the heck is this order? I'm leaving town for two months and I need it by Tuesday. Wednesday. I need it by Wednesday. Yesterday. Guess what? It came in today. And I'm not there anymore. So your Jazzmaster pickup covers are sitting at my mother-in-law's house 250 miles from me right now. So I have to have her we'll ship it. me that box and then I will be able to send you your stuff. That's what it was just, man, I tell you what, there are some things I love living in a motorhome full time. We have no regrets about it, but every once in a while there is a logistic thing with work that I'm pretty tight on it. We are, we are very... This was not a last minute order either. No. I ordered it three weeks ago. And the reason I called them is I was like, where's my order? And she's like, well, you ordered this custom pick guard on it. And I'm like, well, you could have just put the pick guard on back order and sent me the rest of my stuff. That's what you do the rest of the time. Well, you know, went into this whole thing. It turned into a big deal. And I don't... I'm not, and of course they blamed it on COVID and all this stuff. And I'm not one of these people that, um, I will just take it. Like if you call me and you're mad because your order's not there yet, 99% of the time, I'm not going to be like, well, it's somebody else's fault. You know, this other company, whatever, like your stuff is, I'm not usually the person that will pass the blame on to somebody else. I will say You've probably seen it. I don't know what business all of you are in, but if you, if there are probably many of you that are in various businesses who have seen, you know, the price of plywood going up, the mm -hmm. price of copper going up, um, the price of fuel going up. I spent two hundred and two dollars filling up my motorhome today. It maxed out my credit card because you know it like shuts off at a hundred bucks. I had to like start it three times, and then the last time was only two dollars and forty seven cents. It was kind of funny. I'm just saying. This COVID thing's weird because... I, Lingering effects. Yes. Yeah. While I don't want to blame my problems on COVID and then tried to make an excuse for you as a client, um, there are weird things that are not available and on back order and higher priced and stuff that I had no idea would be affected by that, but legitimately really are. So, um, And pick guards is the one right now for me. They're, um, they specifically need some kind of pot. I don't know where I just scrolled off the screen, I think. Okay. A very specific. 100. Oh, you found it. Okay, one meg. Let me see what I can find. I don't know if I can get that either, but pots are in short supply right now too. Um, yeah. 
but I will, I will see what I can find. Please do me a favor. It, this will get lost in the comments. Yeah, they said they were going to message yeah, you. Yeah, please email me or message me on Instagram or on um, Patreon or I don't remember if you're a Patreon member or not. I apologize. I don't remember that right this second. Um, but just um, do that. Email me, whatever, and we'll get you. Well, I'll try to do what I can to get you sorted. Awesome. Yeah. Super fun, you guys. This is uh, this has been really fun. And I, I know it was a little choppy sometimes and whatever, but I really appreciate everybody hanging in there. And uh, we had a lot of new folks. Um, uh, David Kornblatt, I don't know what those pickups are. I've never heard of them, actually. Um, yeah, you guys are awesome. This has been great. Please check out the video tomorrow. It's going to come out at noon. And um, let me know what you think of it uh, and the format. And what you want to see in the next one. Because I want to do another one next week. Um, that's kind of kind of an on-the-fly deal. Because, you know, when new stuff comes out. So, um, and the news thing, too. You know, I, that's a kind of a last-minute production deal. So, please let me know. Uh, little segments or parts of that that you might want to see. I would love, love to get your input on it. And thanks for hanging out. Thank you, everybody, for the super chats. I... So I, it surprises me sometimes. I shouldn't be surprised because you all are awesome. Um, but it does surprise me sometimes. It is much appreciated. And it is much appreciated. It is literally what makes us tick um, and keeps us going. Because these videos are, you know, all this costs money to make. So I really do appreciate your support. And uh, we will talk to you tomorrow during the preview or the premiere of our next video.